Hello, my name is Martin, this is Gary and this is Borku, and we would like to present you our project about the comics as lossy and envelopes. First, let me explain the title. What are the comics or the comic sections? Where? Well, as the name suggests, they are about the curve obtained as the intersection of a circular conic surface with a plane. In the beginning, you can see an ellipse. Then the shape becomes a parabola, and in the end, it transforms into one of the branches of a hyperbola. What about the locus? Locus is a figure containing all the points with given property and only them. For example, the locus of points which are at a given distance from a given point is a circle centered at the given point and whose radius is the given distance. And what about the envelope of a family of lines? A one parametric family of lines is a set of lines depending on one parameter. We call envelope of family of lines such a curve that touches every line from the family, and each point of the curve is a tangent point to a line from the family. But when does it all start? Conics, the conics have caught mathematicians' attention in antiquity. Many great men have studied their properties. Among them are Euclid, who wrote the elements of the conics, which is something like a study source that unfortunately hasn't reached our time. Archimedes found the area of a parabolic segment. He also guessed the reflective property of the parabola. And Apollonius of Pergo, who gave the most detailed description of the properties of the conics in his essay Named Conics, where, today, where today's names of those lines have been introduced. Now it's Borco's turn to tell you more about the conics. The first conic that we're going to consider is the parabola. By definition, parabola is a locus of points that are equidistant distant from a given point and the line. This point is called a focus and the line directions. In the first picture, we can see how points G, H, and I, which are the parabola, are equidistant from the focus F and the directrix D. Parabola has many definitions, but we chose that definition because in GeoGebra, when you select a point and a line, the software draws you one unique parabola. Here we have an algorithm for constructing points on the parabola. And it is that we choose an arbitrary point D from the directrix. Then we erect the perpendicular line Q at point D to the directrix. And after intersection with the perpendicular bisector of FD, we get point P, which is from the parabola. In this animation, we can see how when point D moves through the directrix, many points on the parabola are drawn. In this case, point D is a parameter. Although we can draw as many points as we want, we can't draw even an arc from the problem. In this video, you can see how in the pre-computer age, the problem is an envelope of lines is drawn using no text. In this animation, we can see how the one parametric family of lines that are perpendicular bisectors to the segment FD is drawn when point D moves along the directrix. In this case, point D also is a parameter, and we can't see the parabola here, but we can see only its function. The theorem states that the parabola P is an envelope of the family of lines P. Parabola also has a reflective property, and it is that a ray coming from an inside point of the parabola, which holds perpendicularly to the directrix, after reflection of the parabola passes through its focus. And in this animation, we can see a visual representation of the reflective property. Now, Gary will tell you more about this reflective property. Here, you can see a real-life example of the reflective property, 
This is the this is a video about the lightning of the Olympic fire, which happens uh, every time for the Olympic Games. It is believed that God Apollon, with his great strength and power, sends rays and lights in his torch. But what really happens is that this object here is a reflective, is a parabolic mirror, which has the same properties as the parabola, and rays coming from the sky reflect from its surface and gather in one point, which is this focus, and the lady puts the torch in it, and this is how the fire is lighted. Now, Martin will tell you more about the other conic. Hello again. The next conic we are going to take a look at is the ellipse. By definition, ellipse is the locus of points for which the sum of the distances to the given points, the pole sign, is constant. Um, for points A, B, and C, it's true that A1 plus A2 equals B1 plus B2 and equals C1 plus C2. The ellipse can be defined in many ways. In, in the picture on the right, you can see an ellipse constructed in GeoGebra. As you can see, it is constructed by choosing three points, the two fold by F1 and F2, and a third point, point T, which is going to be on the ellipse E. After choosing them, GeoGebra draws unique ellipse. This is what motivated us to choose the geometric definition that we are using. Using the algorithm on the right, we can construct points from the ellipse. We use point K, which runs through the circle as a parameter. In the movie, you can see how the construction is done. Keep in mind that even though we can construct as many points as we want, we cannot construct even a small part of the ellipse. Then, using Again, using point K as a parameter, we define a one parametric family of lines, E, where those lines are the segment by sectors of the segment F2, K. Let's match out uh, then the theorem states that our ellipse E is an analog of this family of lines, E. Let's mention that we use the same algorithm for constructing this family of lines as the one before, with the small, uh, with the small difference that we have deleted one of the lines, then the other one draws the family. If you take a look at the movie, you can see the ellipse appearing as something like a shadow, even though no points from it are constructed. Similarly to the parabola, the ellipse has its own reflective property. It is that a ring coming from one of the foci F1, after reflection of the ellipse, passes through the other focus F2. The family of lines E facilitates the proof of that theorem. We use the fact that when a ray reflects on the ellipse E, it actually reflects on the line which touches the ellipse at this point of reflection. And this line is from the family of lines E. Now, Gary has the floor. The last thing that we are going to consider is the hyperbola. Hyperbola is defined as the locus of points for which the absolute value of the difference of the distances to two given points, which are known as foci, is constant. Here on your left side, you can see the hyperbola H defined by its two foci, F1 and F2. Points A, B, and C are from the hyperbola, and for them, it's true that the absolute value of A1 minus A2 is the same as the absolute value of B1 minus B2 and is the same as the absolute value of C1 minus C3. Hyperbola has many definitions, but we chose this one because in the algebra, in order for us to draw a hyperbola, we need to choose three points. The two poles side F1 and F2, and a third point T, which belongs to the hyperbola. After choosing those three points, the software of the algebra draws us a new hyperbola. Using the algorithm on your right, you can construct points from the hyperbola. We use a point, point K, as a parameter that runs along the circle. When it, when it is in different positions along the circle, we can construct different points from the hyperbola. Here, we are using this algorithm, we can construct as many points as we want, but we can't we can, we can draw even a small arc from the hyperbola. Again, using the same algorithm, but slightly modified, we can introduce a one-parameter family of lines, H, 
which is the segment bisectors of the segment F2K. We, however, here have two small exceptions for point K. These are two positions along the circle when the segment F2K is parallel to F1K. Then we have two special lines that are called the asymptotes, and for them it's true that they are tangent lines to the hyperbola in the cake. Here on this animated GIF, you can see uh, the theorem that states that the hyperbola H is an envelope of this one parametric family of lines. We can't see the hyperbola, but we can see uh, we can see its path. The hyperbola also has its own reflective property and it states that a ray coming from one of its branches H1 that is direct to one of its foci F2 after reflection from this branch H1 passes through the other focus F1. We uh, prove this theorem by using the fact that when the ray reflects from the branch it actually, it actually reflects from the tangent length that passes through the a point of reflection. And now Martin will tell you more about the reflective properties. There are many more applications of the reflective properties of the conics. For instance, the device which is used for breaking kidney stones has the shape of a rotational ellipsoid. In one of its foci, a, shock, a source of shock waves is placed. Then, a large amount of those waves reflects of the, of the device and converges into the other focus where the kidney is situated. In that way, the stone is easily broken and passed by the body. We can find another use of the, reflect, of the reflective properties of the conics in telecommunications. The dish on the satellite has the shape of a rotational parabolic. In its focus, a receiver is placed. Is placed. That allows even a weak signal to reflect of the dish Converging its focus in that way becomes stronger and be successfully received. Yeah. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation. We would like to thank our teacher uh, Dimitri Dimitrov and Professor Dr. Borisov Wazarov for the scientific support. And we would like we would also like to thank 125th School in Sofia for the support. Thank you.